Excuse me, in one word, what do you love about Providence Place? Family! Friends! Wellness! Art! Compassion! Home! <laughs> Laughter! No matter what community means to you, you'll find it at Providence Place in Holyoke. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. I'm Carolee McGrath. Hundreds of local Catholics witness for life. I'll have the story coming up. I'm Nick Morganelli. I'll introduce you to some very dedicated couples that sit in these pews each week, and they invite you to do what they've done in their parish. And Dan Dumas has the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. The pro-life cause is again making headlines in light of recent New York legislation legalizing abortion right up to birth. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo signed the controversial bill on the anniversary of the 1973 Supreme Court decision legalizing abortion in the United States. Even though many years have passed since that decision, pro-life supporters have not lost hope that the decision will eventually be reversed and they still gather every January across the nation to raise their voices, calling for respect for all life and an end to abortion. Carolee McGrath has more. On a frigid January morning, dozens left St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish in Northampton praying and witnessing for life. This is the first year the church has organized the Parade for Life held in conjunction with the National March for Life, which took place in Washington, D.C. on Friday, January 18th. The annual March for Life commemorates the 46th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the 1973 U.S. Supreme Court decision which legalized abortion on demand in the United States. Our walk really didn't go far, but I think one minute of witness is worth a thousand words. Father Francis Riley says not everyone can travel down for the National March, so he wanted to hold an event so many people could attend. He says he wants people to know that all lives matter. We know that all lives matter, made in the image and likeness of God. So that's why we parade today. Unborn life matters. About 75 participants walked and prayed with the procession ending at Pulaski Park. There, the group all sang, let there be peace on earth together. Because I am a mother, uh, I have children, I have grandchildren, and I feel that um, every life is precious and every child deserves a chance to uh, come to his and her full uh, potential. On the actual anniversary of Roe v. Wade, January 22nd, a local March for Life was held in Springfield. The event was organized by Pro-Life of Pioneer Valley, Inc., and began with a mass at St. Michael's Cathedral. More than 30 students from Pope Francis High School attended, in addition to several homeschooling families. Marilyn Stearns helped organize the event for the last few years. She says it was inspired by Catholics for the Unborn, a group which has been holding monthly vigils for life at St. Michael's for more than 25 years. We feel, especially having the youth involved, and when people see this, you know, maybe they'll stop and think about it and look yeah. further into it. We don't know. Yeah. But we just know that prayer is our most powerful weapon, and so that's what we do. The Mass was celebrated by Father Henry Dorsch with Father Ryan Rooney and Father David Offiero con celebrating. After Mass, the group, 100 strong, marched down to City Hall in Springfield. Torin Early is a senior at Pope Francis. This was his second time participating in the local march. Um, I just feel like um, all children deserve a fair shot at life and everyone deserves a chance of their own. Fellow Pope Francis senior Emily Butler attended the march for the first time this year. She held a sign that quoted children's author Dr. Seuss. I think that like a person's a person no matter how small I really love that saying because I believe that like from the moment of conception that is a human life and that deserves to be respected. Hundreds of people from the diocese also traveled down to the National March in Washington, D.C. The theme this year was unique from day one. 
Organizers were expecting 100,000 people in Washington, but many say the number was far greater, although an official count is not taken. Vice President Mike Pence addressed the crowd along with a bipartisan lineup of speakers. And while standing for life is not easy given the politics that surround the issue, it's necessary, say so many. I think that we have to stand up for what is right and so many other people are standing up for what is wrong. And so we, our faith tells us we have to do this. According to the National Right to Life Committee, since Roe v. Wade, more than 60 million babies have been aborted in the United States. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. So as we have just seen in Carolee's piece, these annual marches for life held around the country to pray and support for all life and an end to abortion in this country continue to draw many supporters, including young people. They've become re-energized in recent weeks by the passing of the controversial legislation in New York State, which seemingly leaves open the possibility of abortion rights up to the end of the third trimester. We are joined now by Father Daniel Pakalik, pastor of Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westfield. Father Dan was so upset by the New York legislation that he has organized a prayer response to be held this Sunday, late afternoon, February 10th at his church. And he joins us now to tell us more. Hello, Father Dan. Hi, Sharon. So what are the plans? Well, we, we wanted to do, certainly as a first response to uh, this new legislation, uh, a, pr a prayer response. and. Um, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has developed a holy hour for life uh, that they promote and we thought it would be the perfect way to um, bring people together around this issue. So many people don't know how to react and don't know what they individually can do and so we've said that prayer would be the right way to start. And I understand Bishop Rosansky will be there early to greet folks? Yes, we're very pleased that Bishop is joining us. I know he feels very strongly about uh, supporting all the pro-life issues uh, that we face, and particularly now with this new legislation. Um, I think he feels the urgency of time, as we all do, to uh, take a stand and to see if anything can possibly change. So what are you hoping that people will take away from this? Well, I think, again, uh, it's, it's created a great deal of un unsettledness in people and in their hearts. And we want to be able to have people, again, feel that there is something they can do. There's many things they can do uh, among education, learning about the issues. Uh, so many people I find don't really understand all of the life issues uh, that are out there. Uh, we also hope that uh, on Sunday, we're gonna have a lot of materials available um, for healing ministries as well, for those who have had abortions in the past, I, this time can be very uh, difficult for them to be hearing about uh, the new legislation. And so certain ministries like Rachel's Vineyard, uh, our Clearway Clinic uh, in Springfield are wonderful ministries that we want to educate people about as well. And again, Father, the Holy Hour will be for people of all ages, um, but you're especially including teenagers, I understand. We are very uh, much wanting to invite um, young people. Uh, they have been really the backbone of the whole pro-life movement in recent years. Many of them have gone on the March for Life in Washington, and uh, we're hoping that those groups will join us on Sunday as well, uh, as well as all people of goodwill, uh, people in our parish here, uh, people in the diocese and beyond, all are invited to join us. The youth will be uh, going over after the Holy Hour to our parish center and our guest speaker will be uh, addressing them a little further on uh, the pro-life issues that are so important for them to know about. All right, Father Dan Pakalik, thanks so much. Thank you, Sharon. And again, if you would like to attend the Holy Hour for Life, it will be held this Sunday, February 10th, starting actually at 445 with Bishop's comments at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Church in Westfield, 127 Holyoke Road. And still to come on Real to Real, Dan Dumas will have the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield, and Nick Morganelli tells us about a group of married couples who are dedicated to strengthening their relationships, their families, and their faith. These stories and more are still to come on Real to Real.
the Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Passionist Brother Terrence Scale and your Chalice host, inviting you to take time out of your busy days and join us Sunday morning. We welcome Bishop Mitchell Rosansky, the ordinary of our diocese, as we start this year's annual Catholic Appeal. The Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection, Sunday morning at 10, right here on 22 News, WWLP, and coming up next on Fox 23, WXXA. Excuse me, in one word, what do you love about Providence Place? Family. Friends. Wellness. Art. Compassion. Home. <laughs> Laughter. <laughs> no matter what community means to you, you'll find it at Providence Place in Holyoke. St. Michael's Academy, where a dynamic curriculum meets enriched learning. Where morals are instilled and confidence is boosted. Where lasting relationships are nurtured and safety is priority. St. Michael's Academy. Travel with Catholic Communications in August 2020 for the Pilgrimage of the Decade as we experience the Oberammergau Gau Passion Play. Join Springfield Bishop Mitchell Rosansky and Father Gary Daly for the spiritual journey to Germany and the village of Oberammergau. Gau. Since 1634, this famous play has been performed every 10 years in this quaint Alpine village. Our 10-day pilgrimage will begin in Brussels, Belgium and continue through Cologne, Heidelberg, Oberammergau, Gau, and Munich, Germany. With daily breakfast and dinners included, pilgrims will enjoy daily mass in many of Germany's brilliant cathedrals and churches, a cruise on the Rhine River, a tour of Cologne's cathedral treasury containing the staff of St. Peter, and a visit to Munich's famous Glockenspiel. Book this incredible opportunity now for $5,439. For more information, go to iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas with your Real to Real News Briefs. Lorraine Houle, a Chicopee native who began Lorraine's Soup Kitchen, has served the hungry in her community since 1980. She passed away just before Christmas at the age of 91, but her legacy will continue for many years to come because of a different Super Bowl that happened at all masses at St. Rose de Lima Parish on the biggest football weekend of the year. Nick Morganelli has the story. Although we are excited once again that the New England Patriots won another Super Bowl, there's even more reason to celebrate at St. Rose de Lima Parish in Chicopee. They raised thousands of dollars in their Super Bowl of Caring collection to serve the poor and needy in the community. I just love giving back. I altar serve a couple times a month for the church and then I also take CCD classes through the church. Nate is just one of the youth, including Boy Scouts, that volunteered to collect donations in huge soup pots after all masses on Super Bowl weekend. So the money that we collect goes towards Lorraine Soup Kitchen, which is a couple of streets away, and it just helps like add more food to their pantry and just be able to provide for the homeless and the people that need help to get food on the table for families. Lorraine Houle, a local champion in Chicopee, founded the outreach in 1980, although she passed away just two days before Christmas 2018. At the age of 91, her legacy lives on. So Lorraine Soup Kitchen is the only real social agency in the city of Chicopee that will respond uh, to the needs of the poor. So it's, I think it's incredibly important that we all work together within the city to, to fund it on a regular basis. Bruce Broyles, the Western New England ambassador of the program, told us that the Super Bowl collection idea began in 1990 in a small Presbyterian church, and it is a national campaign each year for many denominations. Well, it means a lot that young people today see that there's a real need within our community at Chicopee, and with all hands working together, we can somewhat lighten the burden of so many hungry, and so it really teaches young people that from the very beginning they can assist 
in some way in uh, resolving uh, some of the immediate crises that some families may experience. If your parish hasn't participated, visit SuperBowl.org. And if you miss the pots this year, remember, you can donate any time to your local food pantry. They need help year-round. For Real to Real, I'm Nick Morganelli. Thanks, Nick. Students and scouts from across the Diocese of Springfield cheered on the Springfield Thunderbirds during the annual Catholic Youth Night at the Mass Mutual Center. John Thornton tells us more. It was a night to celebrate Catholic education and scouting while enjoying the Springfield Thunderbirds as they took on the Utica Comets. Springfield Bishop Mitchell T. Rosansky was also present to represent the diocese and enjoy the game. The purpose of Catholic Schools Week is to really focus on who our Catholic schools are, our Catholic identity, how we bring our Catholicism into learning and into every aspect of our students' lives. The opening ceremonies of the game showcased to local Catholic school students including students from St. Mary Academy in Longmeadow who sang God Bless America. So it's a way for Catholic schools nationally and locally here in Springfield to celebrate what they do, who they are, um, what's their identity. And so you'll see masses. Um, every, every one of our schools had a, had a mass. Um, they have prayer services. A lot of times they have academic competitions. A lot of them will open, have open houses. So we get students, uh, prospective students in the doors. The Springfield Thunderbirds annual Catholic Youth Night is meant to highlight the value of Catholic education. The event was a chance for Catholic schools and Catholic scouting organizations to promote themselves. We're here, kind of uh, have a little table here to celebrate Catholic scouting in the diocese. This happens to be Scout Sunday this weekend for our Boy Scouts. Um, and we're also recognizing Scout Sunday for Girl Scouts, which is further in March. But we're, we had a mass earlier this evening at the cathedral celebrating that. And we're just letting people know about the different ways that they can get involved in Catholic scouting in the diocese. And also different programs we have for young people through the Office of Faith Formation. Unfortunately, the Thunderbirds were beaten by the Utica Comets 4-3. to three. But Catholic school students, parents, and administrators still enjoyed their night out. In Springfield, I'm John Thornton. And finally, two students currently attending Elms College in Chicopee received the Honorable Kent B. Smith Scholarship January 31st during a short ceremony held at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield. Sharon Rollier has more. Members of the St. Thomas More Society of the Diocese of Springfield were on hand to present $1,000 scholarships to two Elms College sophomores. This year's recipients were Manuel Savalza and Hannah Pachardo. Both are studying in the criminal justice program. Attorney Michael McDonough, director of the St. Thomas More Society, presented the scholarships. We really um, believe in um, helping uh, future lawyers and future individuals in the community who are committed to joining our ranks, uh, whether that be lawyers, court clerks, paralegals, uh, law enforcement officers, or any people committed to the pursuit of justice in Western Massachusetts. Um, many of us received help when we were students struggling, and so we believe it's imperative to always pay it forward to the next generation. Each year since 2012, the St. Thomas More Society presents the scholarships to two students in the legal profession. The award, named after the late Honorable Kent B. Smith, a judge in the Massachusetts Appeals Court with a reputation as a lion of the bar. Savalza, who lives off campus, expressed his gratitude for the scholarship. The Riverside, California native plans to work with troubled youth. I want to do a youth correctional counselor, kind of work with uh, troubled kids, um, kind of show them that that's not the way that they want to live their life and everyone can turn their life around. Pichardo said that the scholarship will help offset her college expenses as well. She said she works long hours during her college breaks and in the summer at a small pizza shop in Saratoga Springs, New York. And I work 12-hour shifts almost every day of the week, so it's a little bit intense, but it's definitely worth it in the end because I'm going to get a great education. And after her graduation in 2021, Pichardo said she plans to enter the police academy and would eventually like to become a homicide detective. Our congratulations to both recipients. And remember, to keep informed on all the latest news in the Catholic Church locally and beyond, log on to iobserve.org. There you can read articles written by our Catholic communication staff, as well as view archived episodes of Real to Real. That's iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas, and those are your Real to Real news briefs.
As the season of Lent approaches, the Catholic Church continues to face questions about its handling of the abuse of minors by priests. In hopes of answering some of these concerns, a special report in the February issue of the Catholic Mirror chronicles the Springfield Diocese's past responses and current procedures addressing the abuse that occurred in our own parishes. And as the diocese embarks on a program of prayer and dialogue to address the ongoing pain of clergy abuse, the people and programs highlighted in this issue illustrate another important aspect of the healing process. Just do it. Do what Jesus told us to do, and through the ministries and agencies supported by the annual Catholic Appeal, give food and clothing to the poor, as demonstrated by the Charity Center at St. John Paul II Parish in Adams. Provide comfort and compassion for the dying by volunteering or donating to Ruth Willemaine's Harmony House. Continue to volunteer for your parish ministries in the spirit of parish angels Vicki and Bob Stoops of Westfield. Support the diocese's seminarians and Catholic schools whenever and however you can. By donating to the annual appeal, know that you are keeping Christ's promises to the sick, the lonely, the prisoner, and those in mourning. You are welcoming the stranger and caring for the little child and the widow. As Bishop Rosansky reminds us, supporting the annual appeal allows us to bring the love of Christ to countless people in need, even during these troubling times for the church. Our journey through Lent will include days of prayer, tolling bells, and more questions about the consequences of the abuse crisis. We will share the cross built by these sins and crimes against our brothers and sisters. And day by day, we will strengthen our faith and our church by following this command given to us by the Mother of Jesus. Do as he tells you. At the editor's desk, I'm Rebecca Drake. You are watching Reel to Reel, your window on the world around you. Here again is your Reel to Reel host, Sharon Rulier. Finally today, with Valentine's Day coming up, the fire of the Holy Spirit is burning in the hearts of some special Latino couples at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Church in Springfield, each dedicated to strengthening their faith journey as a couple and family and in their church community. Nick Morganelli tells us more. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God. Meet Holding Hands with Jesus, a married couples ministry at Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Church in Springfield, who are spiritual warriors for holiness in marriage and family. So one of my desires uh, during a retreat uh, for Advent one year was to get men and women together and to, to form small groups. And we did that during the retreat, uh, but I wasn't expecting the, that uh, they would take it past the retreat. They started to get together and uh, pray every week uh, and invited me along a couple times to give them a little bit of formation, but I'm glad that uh, they, they took their pastor's suggestion well and uh, ran with it. These dedicated couples of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Church asked for the support of their pastor, Father Ryan, and sought his spiritual direction for the group. The focus of this group is to maintain um, the family together and have the group um, with a base and the foundation of God in the middle of it. We meet every Wednesday. Every family has a different situation and we're there to help motivate each other on, on the best way we can and through prayer. And um, we are constantly um, talking to each other on a chat and um, we talk about the prayer of the day and what each of us is going through and whatnot. And it's by constant communicating and being there for each other. I think he has helped us to have more communication since we started the group, um, to be more united, to talk things through instead of arguing like before. 
Um, so I think like the Holy Spirit has really done a lot of work with us since we started the group. And I just feel every week that we come, we come out with something new. And we get like more strength and we learn more things that strength our marriage and our family with our kids too. It's been a blessing, really. I, I think that empowering the laity to um, to take charge and responsibility of the parish is the most important thing uh, because there are so few priests uh, and uh, and we need the laity's help to to reform our parishes. My hope for them would be to inspire their children. As these couples meet, their children are often present, especially for family time with sweet snacks. Their presence is vital as they witness their parents and grandparents' dedication to scriptural teaching in their marriages and family life. Now that we're here, um, we have one of, um, one of the couples who went over our house, an older couple, to talk about you know, what they went through and talk to our um, kids, you know, how they handle the situation. I could relate to the Rosarios. They, like myself, have three teenagers in the home right now. It's like a sponge, you know, they absorb everything. And everything we do, they look at it, you know, and they learn and they get, they get, you know, they, they copy that. So we're trying to be the role model for them, you know, so they, so we, they, they can follow our step, you know. So in the past, it was, you know, all crazy, you know, partying, drinking and stuff like that. And we decided to leave all that out the house so, you know, our kids can be better, you know, because we are, we, we bring them God, you know, we go, we go to church and we serve, we serve God. And that's what we want for our kids. They have, they have taught us on how to treat our kids, how to, how to make time for each other. Um, marriage life is not easy, but it is something that I, we made a promise to God when we, when we got married and it's something that we're going to be, you know, that we fight for. Pastor Rooney expressed the responsibility the church has to provide for the Hispanic community and is overjoyed that his is so vibrant. He is looking to this group to spiritually awaken a different demographic. One of the things that my parish is lacking is youth involvement. So hopefully their, their kids get together, they form a youth uh, ministry and, uh, and that keeps our parish growing. When you get really energetic people together that are happy and they know how to pray, that creates growth and that creates a place that you want to be. And it's uh, something that can happen in every parish. I couldn't leave this wonderful group without expressing my feelings, all the while practicing some Spanish. Muchas gracias por compartir tu grupo con nosotros. Dios bendiga tu matrimonio y tus familias. El Señor Jesús es tu fortaleza y tu eres luz para otras parejas. Amen. For Real to Real, I'm Nick Morganelli. What an uplifting story. And for this week, that's Real to Real. Remember, you can find updates anytime, as well as information and news on the Catholic Church at iobserve.org, your one stop for clear and accurate news on the Catholic faith. That's iobserve.org. We also update our Facebook daily with news of what our reporters are working on. So check us out and friend us at Catholic Communications. And a reminder to our Berkshire viewers that tonight at 6 p.m. at St. Joseph's Parish Hall in Pittsfield, Bishop Rosansky will hold the second of his diocesan-wide abuse crisis listening and dialogue sessions. Tonight gets underway at 6 p.m. All are invited. And we'll see you next week at this same time for another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. See you then. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal, and the support of you, our faithful viewers.